Hey, so for today's video, we're just going to kind of go through the unboxing of the Super 73 uh, S2. Uh, I bought this in April for my wife, um, and it took about three weeks to arrive. Um, so we got it on April 20th. Uh, and the reason why we got this, or the reason why I bought this was because uh, it has one of the lowest seat heights for a cafe racer scrambler looking e-bike um, the seat height is at 31 inches uh, which is perfect for my wife um, to kind of flat foot when she's at a stop um, I know it's most of the time uh, it's better to be at, on your tippy toes but um, it's much safer much safer to be able to uh, flat foot it uh, since we ride in tandem with our um, kids So super 73 uses a shipping company called BTX logistics um, Apparently they use this uh, shipping company because the box that they ship their bikes in is much too big for uh, any other carrier to um, handle which I'm not sure if that's entirely true, but at least that's what a Super 73 rep told me. So, um, yeah, the BTX Logistics is a super slow shipping company. Um, their customer service is pretty trash um, based on my interactions with them. Uh, just because I don't think that... Uh, the last mile, um, the, the shipping that gets to your door is um, their company specifically. I think they just outsource it to a last mile shipping and um, if there's no one available then it just kind of sits at their warehouse doing nothing and uh, I'm in Colorado and there is a, that's where this company is based out of. but. They don't allow anyone uh, to pick up at their warehouse at all, um, even pre-pandemic. So it's quite a challenge to get anything from them. But the nice thing about shipping in such a large box is that for the most part, the bike is fully assembled. Um, specifically for this version, I just had to uh, put the handlebars on and uh, put on the headlight um, so I'll kind of like overview the bike a little bit um, because there's kind of a story that goes behind this one specifically because I ended up having to send this one back to Super 73 due to some defects so to start the story, um, after I finished putting everything together, by then it was a little too late to do any test rides, uh, but that kind of gave me a chance to fully charge the battery and connect the app and everything to the phone uh, overnight and then just kind of pick off from there uh, the next day. And so the first ride with this bike, um, everything seemed okay, but then as soon as I started going up hills, um, I was noticing that the motor would randomly cut off uh, right when I hit 26 miles an hour. And uh, basically the motor would cut off, so throttle would cut off, uh, PAS, pedal assist would cut off and everything was still on the power was still on but the motor just wouldn't engage and so i would kind of pump the brakes and bring it back down to about 15 miles an hour and then the throttle and ps would still would again start working and it wasn't every single time it would just happen here and there so i wasn't quite sure what was going on and so when I got back home from the test ride, I kind of double checked all the wiring to make sure there wasn't any loose connections and um, there wasn't. And so 
I took it for a few other uh, test rides and um, it seemed to really happen if whatever I was doing was uh, stressing the controller um, or causing it to heat up and so any type of sustained load above 20 miles an hour on the bike would cause the throttle and PS system to just stop working and so from there I submitted a help desk ticket uh, with Super 73 it took about three days until I received my first response from them and they just wanted kind of um, proof of it and so I had to send over proof of things not working and I'm sorry I uh, forgot to meet the sound so there's gonna be some big dings here and there but I sent them over the proof of the bike not working and then they asked for a ton more information about the bike so they double checked that the firmware was fully updated um, and they also made me s send over screenshots of the app connected to the bike the mode that it was in and snap some pictures of the firmware on the bikes uh, LCD display uh, this process was pretty frustrating um, it took two weeks or so uh, before they kind of were willing to um, entertain the thought of sending any replacement parts for something that was defective um, so even before it got to the point where they were going to send me a replacement part um, I had to really push them uh, to even work with me because they kind of wanted to escape any and all liability um, for the defect and so they basically were like telling me that they think it's the controller that's messed up and because the bike is used um, they can't do an exchange or a refund but in my head I was thinking how am I gonna know that this is defective unless I use it and so I, it was quite a bit of back and forth with the customer service rep and this individual was very nice and cordial it just seemed like his hands uh, were pretty much tied because of uh, company policy and so they kept saying that they didn't have an ETA for a replacement controller and that's when I let them know that you know if I am gonna be stuck with this defective bike I'd rather just send it back for a refund uh, because they're not willing to do an exchange and if not um, I'd pursue the matter with my bank just because under the FTC Federal Trade Commission there's like uh, consumer protection laws against um, defective products and so after I kind of alluded to that or kind of pushed towards that as one of my options that's when they suddenly were able to find and locate a controller so a few days goes by and I receive the new controller um, I start to swap it in with uh, swap it in with the old one and I found out that they sent me a different version of controller for this bike and so basically what that meant was some of the or one of the connections was different and it was the connection to the DC DC converter box and so I had to put all the old stuff back in so that the bike would be functional and wait until they sent me the older version of the DC to DC converter box so 
once I get that, um, I connect everything up and um, for some reason my rear brake light would not turn off at all. It would always be on and so the customer service rep from Super 73 thought it was possibly a defective DC-DC box and sent me a new one to do another swap and I did so um, and after I swapped it um, it didn't solve the issue and then over time I was noticing other issues crop up like um, the biggest one was much lower torque from the original controller that came with the box. So basically the bike was no longer able to climb any hills uh, whatsoever on throttle. Um, and that's like you would basically anytime you hit a hill, um, you would just start losing speed. Uh, even as you're pedaling, unless you're like really cranking it at the pedals the LCD screen would kind of freeze randomly and I would have to turn the bike on and off in order for it to get back uh, into regular operational mode. Um, it would, uh, the bike would no longer charge to 100% unless I charged it off of the bike, which was really weird and there was just a slew of random things that started cropping up with this new controller and so i addressed it with the super 73 representative and um, i was like look you know this new controller you sent me it's not working it's really not even working as well as the original one that came in because the original one that came in it would just have a very uh predictable power uh, cut off at 25 26 miles an hour whereas this new controller that was sent to me it just like had random issues that like, just kept cropping up and um there was no way for me to kind of repeat it so i told the super 73 rep that i'm just making the executive decision to go ahead and switch back to the old controller and dc box and so I did that. I waited a few days for a response from uh, this the the rep, and he finally got back to me and gave me the two choices that I kind of overviewed with them at the beginning is exchange or refund. And so I chose an exchange just because um, the tough thing again, one of the reasons why I bought this bike specifically was because it's the perfect height, uh, seat height for my wife uh, that is still a Scrambler Moto uh, racer looking e-bike because that's kind of what she wanted. And so it took about a week or so for them to send me a box. Um, and then once I got the box, I boxed up the bike and it took me another uh, or it took them another week before BTX was uh, willing to come pick up the bike and now I am currently waiting uh, I'm not sure how much longer um, but it says that the bike has supposedly been picked up by BTX uh, it's a three to five day uh, shipping item but they don't anticipate me getting it until July 1st which as of today which is Friday June 18th is um, roughly 9 business days and 14 days total away they actually picked up the order um, yesterday on the 17th so um, it kind of doesn't make sense that their shipping time is so long for um, a ground shipment from uh, Las Vegas because that's literally a 10-11 hour drive from uh, Denver, Colorado. 
So that's kind of where I'm at with this bike right now. Um, but I think what I'll do now is I'll kind of spend um, some time making some videos of us riding this Super 73 um, because some of the cruises we did was okay with the older uh, controller that did the power cutoff because we were just going really slow so we didn't have any power cutoff issues but it was an annoying issue and um, it was something that would I think long term have caused the bike to um, totally malfunction so um, yeah we're kind of just waiting for the next bike thanks for watching and kind of listening to me um, babble about um, our experience with the Super 73 so far um, I think next time what I'll do is I'll kind of script and write everything out but um, I mean that's always what I want to do but I get lazy and so I just kind of do everything off the cuff so thanks again for watching uh, like subscribe and comment below thanks bye